It is a warm welcome to you viewers as we meet once again on another episode of Crime Watch, a program brought to you by your police service, the Zimbabwe Republic Police, as a platform to forge a common front in fighting crime. My name is Onesisa Sivanda, and joining me on the sign language is Victor Kanyaofu. It is always a pleasure having you along. The murder of a 17-year-old boy has left Mutoko community in fear and also baffled as to whether people still have respect for the sanctity of human life. Crime Watch was in Murewa and filed this report. We meet on a rather disturbing note after a 17-year-old Mutoko boy was brutally murdered in cold blood in a case of suspected ritual murder. Detective Assistant Inspector Kanisia Nyamaropa of the Criminal Investigations Department in Murewa takes us through the sad story. On 10 December 2019, in the early hours, we received a report from a passerby to the effect that he had found a body at 145km peak along Harare Nyamapanda Highway. We went to attend the scene and we discovered that it was a 17-year-old juvenile who was a boy. We inspected the body and discovered that the body had several stab wounds and missing private parts. We then suspected that it was a rich comeda. We took the body to Mutoko Hospital Mochar. We instituted our investigations and we received information from members of the public, resulting in the arrest of three accused persons. One of the accused persons is the deceased's brother. And at his homestead, we managed to recover a blood stained jacket and a shirt. Interviews of the accused persons were done and they alleged that the private parts were taken by one of the accused persons to Mozambique, and the accused person is still at large. We appeal to members of the public to assist us with information so that we can apprehend these two accused persons who are still at large. I urge members of the public not to value monetary things at the expense of human life. Meanwhile, the following people have been arrested, convicted, and given varying sentences as follows. Peter Thompson, aged 30, was sentenced to 15 years imprisonment at Maswingo High Court for murder after he fatally struck Stephen Machingura, aged 38, with a whole handle following a misunderstanding over a bag of maize. In another case involving murder, Phineas Mtlanga, aged 28, stabbed the now deceased Hondo Douglas, aged 42, once on the chest after a misunderstanding over a beer drink. He was later sentenced to 23 years in prison at Mutari High Court. Dave Gondo, aged 57, appeared before Murewa Regional Court and was sentenced to 18 years imprisonment for raping a 15-year-old girl. In Wulawayo, Kautra Park residents were relieved after police arrested a serial car thief who had given car owners sleepless nights. On the 5th of January 2020, police in Kaudru Park received a tip-off from the members of the public that an accused person, Tawoga Nzovu, is roaming around Kaudru Park. That led to a swift reaction by the police, leading to the apprehension of the accused person. He was found driving a stolen Honda Fit vehicle. That led the police to refer the case to vehicle theft squad in Blawayo. From the period 18 November, 2019 up to 28 December 2019 accused Tavoka Ndlovu aged 25 went on a vehicle stealing spree in Kaudri Park area in Blawa. I must mention year on that the accused person was arrested by our counterparts from Kaudri Park police station after which they handed him over to us for further investigations we then went on and recovered 10 motor vehicles, which have already been identified by the owners, all valued at 670,000 Zimbabwe dollars. What is very interesting about the accused modus operandi is the fact that whenever he stole motor vehicles, he would drive them to Gokwe and other places, all the time carrying passengers for reward. Whenever the fuel, the fuel ran out, he would sell tires and batteries and come back to Kaudri Park to steal an, yet another motor vehicle. 
we urge members of the public to install tracking devices and alarm systems in their vehicles. We also urge members of the public to park their vehicles at secure places like overnight car parks. Looking into the case of Couch Park, 10 vehicles were stolen from houses without perimeter fences and jura holes. Urge members of the public to remove valuables from their vehicles. A lot of money was stolen from their vehicles, title deeds, passports were left overnight in the vehicle and those documents were stolen. We are going away for a while. Join us shortly. To those who are just joining us, we're in the second segment of Crime Watch. There's been a worrying trend of vendors who are selling both prohibited and fake liquor brands across the country. Police in Bulawayo conducted an operation to get rid of these illegal vendors. Liquor worth over 5,000 Zimbabwean dollars was recovered. As a traffic crime operation unit of Bulawayo Central Police discovered that uh, unlicensed dealers in alcohol uh, were on the increase to the extent that uh, they were parking in the streets displaying the alcohol on top of their cars selling liquor to passersby. At the end of the day, prejudicing the liquor license shops, therefore we launched an operation to arrest all the liquor operators and we managed to recover uh, liquor which is which costs about over 5,000 years. Some of the homemade spirits which we are afraid are even a danger to the consumers. As the police officers in the Hawaii province here, we are urging those uh, consumers in the streets not to buy from unlicensed dealers. And again, we warn the unlicensed dealers that if you find you selling these spirits without a license, we will arrest you and we will confiscate your liquor. So we urge you to do the proper thing. If you want to join liquor, you have a shop, uh, liquor license and operate normally. Meanwhile, following the looting incidents that characterized the illegal demonstrations in January last year, police is calling upon members of the public who lost their property to come and identify it amongst the recovered in Bulawayo. Police in Bulawayo recovered household, electrical, hardware and various clothing items during the 2019 January violent disturbances and we are calling upon members of the public as well as business people to come and identify their property. Amongst the found property, there are generators, microwaves, electrical stoves, freezers, plasmas, gas cylinders, sinks to mention a few. We are calling upon members of the public to bring proof of ownership. It might be a receipt or they can bring serial numbers and they have to be able to fully describe the property which they claim to be theirs. And to those chances who want to take advantage of this exercise, we will ensure that we carry out thorough checks to to verify the validity of their claims. To all members of the public who want to come and view the recovered goods, they can come to License Inspectorate, which is located at Jewel, as from 800 hours to 1600 hours every day. Road accidents can be reduced or brought to an end through everyone's participation. Traffic Safety Council of Zimbabwe spoke on good conduct that promotes road safety. Once again, as we begin uh, this year 2020, we continue to reflect over uh, what obtained last year 2019 in respect of the road traffic injury menace, the wanton loss of lives, limbs and property on our roads due to road traffic crashes. We want them to lay the foundation for our road safety campaign this year. The driver is the main actor in the road traffic crash matrix. So the driver being the main character, a lot is expected of the driver. The competence, the driver just must be competent. There are other fields of life where competence may not be an issue. 
but when it comes to driving a motor vehicle, class 1, class 2, class 3, whichever, the driver must be up to the task. Knowledge, skill, foresight and judgment, these are very critical for that particular driver. Apart from that, we always encourage other people to watch the behavior of the drivers. The passengers must always be alert on what the driver is doing because it is their life also that is being carried by this particular driver. We have teenage drivers. They are a special group of road users who are full of today, tomorrow, who are full of energy, who are all over the shore. But we want them to invest their energy in their own safety so that they will not engage in unauthorized driving. We also have underage driving. When you are not licensed, you are below 16 years of age, and then you are driving. That's against the law. We just have got to abide by law because it is good to be good. It is good to be obedient. Speeding, which is inappropriate and excessive speeds, this then is uh, ganging up with the driver who is drunk or driver who is distracted. That is a major cause for concern. Operators are letting us down, not all of them. Some of the operators are not taking up the campaign for road safety. Operator is the most important person in the life of a driver or crew of a bus. How? He gives them the money for their salary. So he gives them the wages, allowances and everything. So an operator is a better uh, person in terms of uh, discipline for the crew because he can always impose punitive sanctions on the negligence and errant uh, driving of his crew. Even issues to do with a class 2 driver driving a class 1 vehicle or a class 4 driver driving a class 2 vehicle. Let's just abide by the law. We want that to be clear. Operators again will demand that their drivers train in defensive driving. It works. Education is important. Knowledge is power. People perish because of lack of knowledge. So knowledge is fundamental. This year, we wish to court honorable members of parliament, senators, to train in defensive driving so that they become roads for life champions. Remember, on the 16th of December last year, we, we were graced by the highest office of the land, the office of the first trade during our campaigns at the targets, just getting the cares condescending, coming down to us and saying, I am concerned about the wanton loss of lives. I want to also to contribute and play my part. Pedestrians are a major cause for worry. They have become so distracted and sometimes so negligent. Uh, but some pedestrians are children, so children must be taken care of. The, uh, the children have to have an adult, the spirit and principle of accompaniment. You cannot have your children going to school, the ECD, the junior primary school, without accompaniment of an adult. That is not the principle of safety. Adult pedestrians do to manual. Everyone has a role to play. We want to make sure that in the churches you choose who are your road safety champions. In the family, who is your road safety champion? Once every now and then is a reminder to everyone in the family. There you have it, viewers. Together we can prevent road carnage and save lives and property. Join us in the third and final segment. We're taking a short break. Welcome to the third and final segment of Crime Watch. Thank you for staying tuned. The 2020 legal year was officially opened with the judiciary applauding the police for their efforts in clamping down machete building gangs. Overall, the criminal division recorded a set in the number of cases received. This is attributed 
to the high number of public violence cases received in January and August 2019. As we speak, the country is gripped by another spate of violence perpetrated by the so-called machete games. The judiciary acknowledges the work being undertaken by law enforcement agencies in bringing perpetrators of that wave of violence to war. In support of the police efforts, the judiciary system has established special courts to deal with the machete attacks related cases. The courts stand ready to decisively deal with those accused of these offenses in accordance with the law. Special courts to specifically try the cases have been set up in all affected areas across the country. We call upon stakeholders in the Ministry of Justice to make concerted efforts to end this problem. Institutions mandated to protect citizens cannot sit back and watch a few wrong elements terrorize the entire nation for their selfish benefits. We hear stories of class leaders of ordinary Zimbabweans and law enforcement agents. Citizens' rights of freedom of movement, freedom to conduct their affairs without fear, and freedom of association are being violated with the impunity by the gangsters. The original terror gangs have the potential to create anarchy if they are not quickly neutralized. Courts must demonstrate to the public that they are possessed of real capacity to enforce the law and punish crime. After a successful year of fighting crime, Murewa Police Station hosted an end-of-year party where they took time to review and reflect on the achievements in the previous year and strengthening and consolidating relationships with stakeholders and members of the public in fighting crime. We have thought of uh, coming together with the community Pakupera uh, Kwe 2019 policing year 2020 in Ichanga Yakanaka says, What I want out, Vauya, New Wanduau, Kutivati Batsire, Purish, and Mosa Munomamore. A party noi, Rukuratiza, Kutima, Purisa, as a Tarapi Murewa, Vaka Batana Pachesau, Vabatana Pachesau, Varukuanisa, Kuti, Vane Urbatsiro, Kufaku community. Is also no Batsira, which is motivated, Mapurisa to Shana now. Kuitra kuti kana tawa kwa tuma basa, vano ita basa ni maso, nukuda wakuti apana zumezu mingampinyo za wano sangana naso kwa community. Tukuti community ngaira ambe ichiti batisira kuitra utitirichi ze mosa zinege zichiparwa muna raunda edu. The event was attended by local business community, traditional leadership, representatives of government departments, and police officers and their families. Officer commanding the Therapy Murewa District, Chief Superintendent George Mukonda was the guest of honor. <laughs> The Constitution is clear. Constitution is so it is again this background that we should all play part to our day today. The Business Against Crime Forum of Zimbabwe, Bakfors, Murewa District Chairperson, Mr. McDonald Sekerani, called other local leaders to partner the police to fight crime. My son, I know you are going Sagamanto Darubatiro, Pavati, Kuti Iovas with Batros, Aganak, Yes, Nestanebra, the Mapurisa, the Woodpaka Parwa Mosha, Imra Chamira with Zipi Warai, 
zapa nu zapa pura makenos agawa kwa nemi wanu muno mchibatsira ne mapolisi tine ma base stations akawa kwa kawanda chai zvudu nirendure siri mamurevo ari kubatsira ku stop theft kuti kubiwa kwe mombe dzedu mbudzi dzedu huku dzedu zvidere saka ndoka kurudzira chai zvu kuti ngati vatsira ne ne mapolisi nuti kana tichivapa zvatino hapo tiri kutozvipawo isusu ndai ndisiti ninge tichidzirirwa before we come to the end of this week's episode, we would like to highlight some of the people who are on the police wanted list. Mike Kapaya, aged 25, of Bururu village, Chief Chikwaka, Juru, is wanted by Juru police for fraud. Lupane police are looking for Lungisani Sheza, of Daluga village, Chief Mapiwa, Lupane, for stock theft. Zekias Chabangu, aged 21, of Supansi village, Chief Sivasa Filabusi is wanted by Filabusi police for murder. If you have information that may help in the location of any of these people, feel free to contact us on the following details. Our National Complaints Desk number is 0242-703-631. We are also contactable on our website www.zterapy.gov.zw. Email address feedback at zetherapy.gov.zw. We also have a Twitter handle at Police Zimbabwe and Facebook page Zimbabwe Republic Police. You can also view this program on our YouTube channel Zimbabwe Republic Police. This week we are also sharing with you our contact details for provinces should you have anything that may interest us. In Maswingo, we are reachable on landline number 0392-64421. For those in Manikaland, you can contact us on 02020-66637. In Matevelelen North, we are reachable on landline number 0281-32222. We will continue to give you other provincial contact details in our upcoming episodes. This brings us to the end of this week's episode. It has been a pleasure having you along. Pleasant viewing. <music>